Hello all, welcome back to the channel. And today we have a really exciting build because this is our first hard tubing water cooled build for a subscriber. Let's go over the major highlights for this build. And I'm pretty excited for this build because it's not only the first hard tubing build we're doing, but it's also the first build with a parallel flow. For those of you who are not familiar with a parallel flow loop, this is when the liquid goes through the CPU and the GPU at the same time. Whereas sequential flow, the liquid flows through one component first, and then it goes through the second component. So to me, a parallel flow makes more sense because the CPU and GPU gets freshly cooled liquid at the same time. Whereas sequential flow, the second component will always get heated water from the first component. And to sweeten the deal even further, this build is going to feature the monoblock from EKWB for this motherboard. And moving on to motherboards, we're going with the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. This motherboard comes with a variety of premium features such as PCI 4.0, temperature sensors, and multiple M.2 slots. And it has also a little microphone that listens to the noise of your interior case fans to tune it based on how loud it is if you choose to do so. Pretty neat. And for the processor, we're going with the Ryzen 9 3900X. This processor is one of the best processors you can get for this platform. And this processor does handle gaming and heavy video editing and even streaming if you choose to do so. And the great thing about this processor is you can find it right now for a huge discount. And for the radiator, we're going with EKWB's XE lineup. We're going with the 360 millimeter model. And the first thing that really surprised me when I took out this radiator was how big it was. And I was really concerned about how it's gonna fit in this case. But at the end of the day, it worked out and you will see shortly in the build montage. And the great thing about going with this huge radiator is it has tremendous cooling capabilities. And for that, we're only using one radiator to cool the CPU and the GPU at the same time. And for fittings, we're going with Bits Power's fittings in blue. I think these are a classic ever since I've seen them from a few years ago in another build. And they're cheap, they're affordable, they're easy to use, and I just think they look really good. And for the reservoir, we're going with Corsair's Hydro X D5 Reservoir Combo. This is the first time I'm using this reservoir and I am already impressed. This reservoir comes with a bunch of things such as a bracket for mounting for the fan or into your case. It even has a temperature sensor. If you have a temperature sensor port on your motherboard, you can see how hot or cool your water is. And to top it all off, this does also come with RGB lighting. However, this does come with the downside and that is the price. For the price of $155 USD, this is pretty steep for a reservoir combo, but you do get what you pay for in this instance. Additionally, the plug for the RGB seems to be exclusive to Corsair. Unfortunately, it does not seem like it will work with your typical three pin motherboard plug. So you will have to consider buying Corsair's RGB controller. And I believe they have two different kinds to pick from depending on your use case. And for the RAM, we are going with 32 gigabytes of Trident Z Neo. There's not much really I can say for the Trident Z lineup because I've been saying really good things for the last few videos. But the one thing I can say is that they always work and G-Skill has never let me down. So I will continue to recommend G-Skill for your builds. And the good thing about the Neos is that they are specifically tuned for the Ryzen 3000 family. So you can have confidence when you buy this kit that will work with your Ryzen 3000 processors out of the box. However, there's one thing I wanna mention with this particular RAM kit that I have is I tried to tune the timings, but they did not budge at all. So the quality of your unit may allow some overclocking or in my case, no overclocking at all. So your results may vary. And the last thing I want to mention for this build is we decided to use the fill and drain ports that's provided by the case. For me and the client, we felt that this would actually complete the build as this is a feature that came with the case and we did exactly just that. 
So for the fill port, we decided to go with hardline tubing and for the drain port, we used softline tubing. And don't worry, you will see that in the build montage. But before that, here's the overview of the rest of the parts used for this build. The one thing that we are reusing from his previous computer is the graphics card and that is the 1080 Ti. Other than that, the rest of the build is completely brand new. Moving on to the TechCraft score for 1080p gaming, the build easily gets a 10 out of 10. For 1440p gaming, the 1080 Ti is still a very powerful GPU, but games are also becoming more demanding. For this reason, I rate this a 9 out of 10. For 4K gaming, this GPU would not have the power to drive 4K gaming, so I rate this a 7 out of 10. For video editing, the 3900X is still a powerful CPU even though it has been released a year ago. However, this CPU is not as powerful as the Threadripper CPUs, which are meant for extreme parallel processing power, so I give this a 6 out of 10. Lastly, for web browsing, this easily is a 10 out of 10. All right, with that out of the way, let's move on to the fun and exciting build montage.
Okay, before wrapping up, I want to dive into the caveats if you're looking to do something similar or identical to this build. If this is your first time water cooling, especially with a hardline tubing system, the first thing I would recommend is do your due diligence and research, research, and research. You must research things such as the fittings you will use, the tubing size, even the tubing material. There are pros and cons of using PETG and acrylic, for example. Secondly, always order more tubes than you will need. Especially if this is the first time you're water cooling, definitely order a lot more tubes than you need because I can almost guarantee you, you're gonna be redoing a lot of the bends as practice or in case you mess up and the last thing you wanna be doing is being caught without any tubes to complete your build. And moving on to the second caveat is the RGB ecosystem that's available out today. And for this build, we had different RGB ecosystems and as a result, some of the lightings were a little bit quirky and even buggy. So what I recommend is for you to look into the component, and make sure that it's compatible with the RGB software that you are planning to use with your build. All right, that just about wraps up this pretty long video. I don't wanna make it longer than it really is. So if you like what you see today, like this video, please also consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss out on what I put out on a weekly basis and also, Leave a comment below if you want to know more about water cooling. Look into more about water cooling, hardline specifically. I can consider making a video on how to bend your first tubes so you can get started for a build something like this. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video.